Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching In Depth on Now You Know. Sponsored by A Better Root Planner. A Better Root Planner makes finding chargers an intuitive experience. When you're zoomed out, the highest power charging stations are displayed. When you zoom in, more lower power charging stations appear, helping you find the best charger on your way. Another feature making this a better root planner. And brought to you by Bior, or Build Your Own Robot. Take robotics to the kids level. And sponsored as always by ecoware.us where we upload new designs every week. And uh, you're wearing a new one. Yes, make way for the rocketry counselor. Wait, you were the rocket counselor. I was the rocket counselor when I was a camp counselor. I was also the science and LARPing counselor as well. So. The LARPing counselor, best, nice. Best uh, counselor there was. We carbon offset the manufacture, the delivery, and the life cycle of your product. And then on top of that, we plant a tree for every order. So it is super duper carbon negative. This is the home of Tesla Time News. We love Tesla, we think they're great, but there are other manufacturers out there and they are producing EVs. When we started Tesla Time News over three years ago, there were honestly not that many other brands that you could choose from. There was the Nissan Leaf, uh, BMW had the i3, there was the Volkswagen e-Golf, and then if you were like really in the know, there was the Ford Focus electric, the Mitsubishi Miev, and that was pretty much it. And by the way, the numbers produced were very small runs compared to the ICE cars being pumped out in the hundreds of thousands. So these were like the craft beer of cars. Like you wouldn't have necessarily heard of them. Um, someone in a beard probably told you about them and you were like, I don't know where I would even get one. But that was it, that's all that we had. And with all the announcements and the teasers and the unveilings and the press releases and the predictions and the promises about new EVs, it might be helpful to tell you about the actual EVs that are either being produced right now or will soon be produced. After all, we are EV fans, not just Tesla fans. And we are hopeful, just like Elon, that other manufacturers will enter the race with competitive models. So maybe you're on the fence right now about whether to get a Model 3 now. And so knowing what's coming out with some of the other specs might be helpful to you. So let's go with our buyer's guide to available EVs, and we're gonna do it in three chunks. So our first category is limited availability. These are electric cars that are a little bit harder to find, a little bit harder to get. They might be severely limited by region or just a general pain in the neck to get a, your hands on. So we're starting here with the Fiat 500e. And uh, the limiting factor here is that Fiat only really wants to sell these in California and Oregon so they can get the carb credits, the ZV credits. Mm -hmm. So you can get this all over the United States um, and Canada, but you have to try a little harder. You have to look for used ones or you have to get it shipped but it is a pretty cool little car if you're looking for an urban EV. And it goes for a lot cheaper than its MSRP on the used market, which is a huge bonus. Yeah, you can usually find these for around $10,000 or less on the used market. So the next is the Kia e-Niro, and this is a pretty cool uh, SUV four-door. And the only problem here is that, you know, you can get it in Europe and North America, but it's very limited availability. Kia is production limited, and so a lot of dealerships don't either have them on hand or they don't really even know about them. The next is the Hyundai Ioniq. Um, it comes in many different variants. There's a, a plug-in hybrid version, which has a petrol engine. Um, there is a fuel cell version, which is only available in Oregon and California. And then there is the fully electric version. Um, and again, it's going to be difficult to get your hands on because you walk into the dealership, you say, hi, I would like an Ionic. They're going to point to the uh, hybrid version. They're going to say, oh, this is the one for you. And you say, no, I want the one that's electric. And they say, oh, this is a hybrid. You say, no, I want the electric one. They're like, whoa, this is... So that's the problem you're going to run into. Um, they don't really want to sell you the fully electric ones uh, mostly because the dealership won't make any money after that point. And kind of the same story with the Kia eSoul. A great electric car, four-door SUV, but it's only available in the U.S. at the moment and it's kind of a limited availability. Next up is the Renault Kangoo Maxi ZE. So this is a small passenger van. I think you could also convert it into a utility van if you wanted to. And again, it's just harder to get your hands on. Obviously, not a lot of people are buying utility vans in Europe. So you're right. Gonna and it's only to... available in Europe. Right. So you're definitely going to need to do some work to get to actually get one. And uh, look at those acceleration numbers. It's not a fast mover. That's that's fine. It's a it's a people mover. True. All right. The Honda Clarity Electric. It's only available in California and Oregon. And that's really 
all the places it's available because they only lease this vehicle. They don't sell it. They lease it as a three-year lease. So you're not going to find it on the used market and you're not going to be able to get it in, say, Texas because you'd have to, unless you're willing to go to California and lease it there and then drive it to Texas. So it's really limited as to where you're going to find this. And the other confusing factor is that there's Honda Clarities that are not fully electric. So when you go to a dealer, they're going to, again, give you the whole runaround of like, oh, yeah, you want the uh, PHEV? It's a plug-in. The next is the Nissan ENV200. Um, if you're in Europe or the UK, you've probably seen this before because that's where it's available. It again is a small passenger van and a lot of people convert it into a utility van. Again, not that easy to get your hands on. It's not necessarily always available at the dealer. It's a great size for companies that need a small electric van. Right. Right. Next up is the Mercedes Evito. So this is a van that uh, right now is cargo, but a tourer version is coming so that it could seat up to nine people. Mm -hmm. um, and this is only available in Europe right now, and it's very limited availability, but it looks to be a really cool van once they get full production going. The next is the Hyundai Kona. It is a popular car. People do love this car, and I have no reason to believe that they wouldn't. It has an excellent range, though the availability can be somewhat limited. Um, you walk into a Hyundai dealership and they aren't necessarily going to have one out on display. Right. You're going to need to ask. You're going to need to twist some arms to get one. But I mean, look at the range numbers here. It's got a great range. I've driven one uh, with a friend in Denmark and it's just a wonderful car. Luckily, it's available pretty much worldwide. Uh, we're going to use that ter term very loosely. Uh, apologies to everyone in uh, Australia. And because it came out in 2018, there soon will start to be a used market for it, which, which will be really cool. Yeah. All right. So this next chunk of cars are what are available now. Easy to find, easy to get your hands on. What do we got first? The first is, of course, the Nissan Leaf. Um, the Nissan Leaf has a long history, right? You know, we mentioned it in the beginning. Um, so it has an excellent used market. Um, you can get it pretty much anywhere, the new ones and the used ones as well. And the used Leaf, I have to say from experience, is a wonderful uh, little car. It's almost like a little mini investment because you're going to be spending less than $10,000 on it, most likely. And you're basically not going to have to pay anything for maintenance. It's just that easy. So it's a really good option. And the new Nissan Leaf actually has a, a bigger range, which... And, and better styling, obviously, which might be something that you're interested in. If you live in Europe, you know this car because it's very popular, the Renault Zoe. Um, it's all over Europe and you can get it easily and there's plenty on the used market. And again, it's a wonderful car. It does exactly what you need to do in a city because if you look at that range, um, the older models didn't have that you know, 250 kilometer range, but the new ones do. Right. Um, and we love, we drove it around Europe a little bit and we loved it. If you're getting one new, there's a, like a, a, a low price version and then you rent the battery. So it's like a monthly thing. Um, I don't know exactly why they do it that way, but uh, it seems to work for some people. In Europe, this is the Opel Ampera E. And in the United States and pretty much everywhere else, it's called the Chevy Bolt. It's a good car. It has a great range. Um, it has a form factor that a lot of people like, and it has pretty high availability. Yeah, and now there's a lot on the used market because it's been out for a few years. The VW e-Golf is another one that's available worldwide and it's been out for quite a while. The only problem is that they're gonna stop producing it in 2020. We know why, it's because they're coming out with their new ID series, but the e-Golf has been a really popular car and you can get them pretty cheap on the used market. The next car on our list is the Jaguar I-Pace. It's a pretty uh, new addition to this list. Um, it has a great range, it has a uh, DC fast charging. Uh, it's a little bit expensive, and right now it's it's very new, so there is no uh, used market for it. But Jaguar's pushing it pretty hard. Yeah. So next is the Audi e-tron Quattro, um, and this is another uh, pretty pricey electric car, but it's got really great stats. It's only available in Europe at the moment, um, and it's been out long enough that there might start to be a couple in the used market, but not that many. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it's got great fast charging speeds. The next is the Smart EQ42. Yeah, I really don't like the naming of this one. It makes it really complicated because they've got the 4.2 and the 4.4. And... Yes, but everyone just calls it the electric smart car. Right. And the only other problem with this is that there are uh, gas versions of it. So it can make it hard when you're shopping around for them. So make sure you get the electric version. Right. Uh, but this particular one is the two door model and it's, you know, very tiny. It's just made for cities. It's got a really tiny range, but it's been out for a while. And the problem is they're going to stop producing it this year. So, you know, maybe it's a good used car to be looking for. Yeah, this is definitely a great used car. Again, we're looking at sub $10,000 for a used version of it. And usually 
the mileage isn't that high, mostly because you can't drive it very far. And Mercedes stopped carrying these on their lots. They didn't want to carry, uh, you know, an electric car. It just didn't fit with their brand. So a lot of people thought that they stopped being sold, but they didn't. You can find them. The next is the Tesla Model 3. Comes in a uh, variety of uh, ranges and styles. It uh, goes all the way from 220 miles all the way up to 310, which is 310 kilometers, all the way up to 500 kilometers. So this has one of the largest ranges, if you buy the long range version, um, of any car that we've been talking about so far. And it also has the highest max charging speed of any car that we've talked about. 250 so. kilowatts. If you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you probably know all about it. And this car is pretty much available um, I'll say worldwide. I mean, it's not available in India. It's not available in Africa or Latin America, but mm -hmm. it's available in most of the countries that electric cars are available in. Right. And there are so many of them on the roads now that, you know, even if you do live outside of those areas, if you really, really, really wanted one and money was no object, uh, you could probably get your hands on one. So here's the Tesla Model S. It's been around since 2012. So there's tons of them on the used market. Um, they have max charging speed of 150 kilowatts instead of 250 for the Model 3. Um, and they are pricey. Uh, starting price is over $72,000, but they are kind of the benchmark standard to electric cars. And if you need to be able to fit a lot of people in your electric car, the Model X is one of the only electric cars that offers seating of up to seven people. And again, you get great max charging speeds and they've been around for a while. So there's lots on the used market. Right, and let's just, for a second, let's just again talk about Tesla. Tesla is the only company that has a supercharging network. Um, basically anywhere where they are sold, they will have a, a supercharging network to support them. So whether you live in the United States, whether you live in China, whether you live in Europe, um, there is a supercharger network to support your travel. And even in some places in Australia. Uh, a lot of these other cars that we're talking about, there are charging networks. I'm not saying that there's no other option, but there is none that is connected to the brand that sold them, which right. means that uh, there's no guarantee that you're necessarily uh, going to be able to do what you want. All right, so what's coming soon? I mean, you're on the fence right now and you're like, well, those sounded pretty interesting, but is there anything that's coming in the next few months? Well, there is. Maybe. All right, so the VW ID3 mid-range is supposed to come out in summer of 2020. So that is less than a year away, so we put it on the list. Um, it will have a pretty decent starting price and it has really nice stats. Here's one that uh, we've reported on, but I didn't even kind of remember to put on the list until the last second. This is the DS3 Crossback e -tents. It's made by Peugeot, but DS is one of their sub-brands. Um, this is supposed to actually come out in January of 2020 and it has really decent stats. It has 100 kilowatts of fast charging mm -hmm. and it has a decent range. The next is one that both of us have never heard of before. Um, it's an MG, and I didn't know that MG still made cars. It is the ZS EV. And I mean, they say the production is still this year, although none other dealers seem to have it. Um, but we put it on the list because any day now, supposedly, it is supposed to come out, and the stats look pretty decent. Next, we've reported on the Volvo XC40, and this, again, should be coming out late this year or early next year. It has a really decent base price for what you're getting, which is a four-door kind of high-end SUV, and it's got great fast charging, but we don't know exactly what region it will be released to first. The next is the Mercedes EQC. Um, it is supposed to be coming out to the US early in 2020. This has a pretty high base price, um, but a pretty decent range and pretty decent charging speeds. The Skoda CityGo E4, which is a mouthful, um, should be coming out in early 2020. So we put it on the list. It'll only be available in Europe, but it has a great starting price and it'd be a really good city car. Everyone's heard of this one. The Porsche Taycan Turbo. This is uh, an electric car that has gotten a lot of press recently with the uh, starting price over $100,000. I don't think that it is... Uh, an option for most people. But again, it has a great range and it has blistering fast charging speeds. The chargers that can give you that speed, we'll see what kind of, uh, you know, charging network you can, you can hit. But overall, it looks like, uh, I mean, if you have it, it's great. And last on the list is the Peugeot E208. This one should be coming out in Europe later this year. Um, it has pretty decent starting price, great charging speeds and uh, a great range. So I'm pretty excited about this one. So that has been our EV buyer's guide for the fall of 2019. And obviously things are gonna change as we move into the next quarter, but we thought this was a good time to kind of get everyone on the same page. These are the cars that are pretty much available to you now. And so it, that way it's a lot easier, I think, to wrap your head around because I'm my head is so full of concept cars and cars that are coming out in 2020 uh, that we thought it was really important to give you the ones that we think are actual 
viable cars for you. If you're interested in any of those cars, please put them in the comments down below, um, just so that way we can read through them and figure out, you know, who's interested in what, or if you think, you know, hey, this car isn't actually ever gonna be available, uh, hey, we would love to know your opinions on it. Again, we live in the United States, so uh, apologies to everyone in Australia and the rest of the world, um, because yeah, of course we can say, oh, here's this car, it's available, and it's like totally not available where you live. Um, yeah, I mean, the right-hand car market is tough for, for car manufacturers when they're dealing with small quantities because they don't want to commit to making a car until they've got enough demand for it in that place. So right. yeah, I do apologize to our friends over in Australia. Right, and then there are just so many other countries where it's like, EVs, what are you talking about? There's no such thing, or it's it's only for a specific type of vehicle, like a motorcycle. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 pretty rough in, in lots of different places in the world. Luckily, in North America and Europe, as we've seen, there are lots of great options. So we just wanted to keep you up on all of the different options, so that way you can uh, purchase educatedly. Thank you so much for watching. Now you know. know.